and next we coming to the glioblastomas i have was mentioning you high grade gliomas are defined either by molecularly now or it, it can go by the conventional where, where we see where there's endovascular proliferation and necrosis the right hand panel what you're seeing in the circle with few red cells in this empty spaces the whole structure is endovascular proliferation which looks like a mimics a glomerulus so we call it the glomeruloid vessels on the left hand panel you can see on the in in the lower half you can see a lot of similar vessels and on the top half you can see there is a necrotic area here okay i'll show you in the next picture see here you can see this is a classic palisading necrosis picture you can see the center area where it is liquefied and necrotic and around that area you can see the nuclear palisades that are aligning all around in the in a uh, irregular fashion so this is called the palisades nuclear palisades and that's why it's called as pseudo palisading type necrosis not a true palisade though okay so it is called as palisading necrosis or pseudo palisade this is a hallmark feature of a high grade glioma and we call it as a gbm okay glioblastoma so another variant of another type of a uh, glioblastoma is what we call the small cell variant glioblastoma. This is most often mistaken for anaplastic oligo. Believe me, this is a very aggressive tumor and you should not miss it and not make a mistake because the cells are very bland but mitotically very active. When you see these two things happening, you better worry that this is a, you're dealing with a, a small cell GBM and most of the time these have EGFR amplifications. Oligos, anaplastic oligos should have 1P19Q codilated. Okay, that I'll come to a little bit later. But you have to remember that all uh, glioblastoma, particular small cell, 80% of them show what is called EGFR amplification. All the red you are seeing in every cell in a blue background, they are all amplified signal of EGFR. That's why red is highlighted in EGFR. And the reference probe we always have to have when we do fish, we carry a reference probe, CEP. So it stands for centromere enumerating probe. Okay, so for each chromosome, this is specific. Okay, and so we use the different um, 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 what you call probes that are set for the centromere, and we we can tell specifically that this is a sep seven centromere. So the reference probe is there, and you can see in many cells, you can normal dosage is two. You should have if there is seven chromosome, that means there should be one pair of chromo so chromosome seven. So you should see only two green signals. That is the normal dosage. But when you start seeing more than two signals, that means we are dealing with the trisomy, tetrasomy, polysomy is coming. So this case not only has EGFR amplification of the signal, EGFR copies are made, EGFR gene, but they are also showing polysomy of chromosome 7. So this was a case of a small cell GBM with EGFR amplification. Most old, older patients with uh, high-grade gliomas now, uh, 40 to 50 percent show EGFR amplifications and the, whenever you see EGFR amplification you will not see IDH they are they negate each other either there's EGFR or they there will be IDH1 okay you don't find both in the same tumor another subtype of glioblastoma is when it shows embryonal features okay conventional glioblastoma showing starts to show embryonal features you start worrying about whether you're dealing with a hybrid tumor or something like that but actually there is a subset of gbm which shows what is called as peanut like morphology so here we can see when wherever there is a glial component gfap that is the glial fibrillar acid protein is positive but when it transforms into a peanut like it sheds the GFAP epitopes and gains synoptophysin. Okay, so you can see here these are the area where you can see synoptophysin positivity. This is the tumor cells that are expressing weakly synoptophysin, showing neuronal differentiation, embryonal tumors. Okay, and most of them was they have very high MIB index. In this particular case, it was IDH positive, IDH1 was positive in the glial component. Okay, so then it had accrued a CMIC amplification also. So as a secondary. Um, abnormality, a subset of them show NMIC amplification. So you can see what is in yellow is all the amplified signal. The red dots are the reference probes. They are the centromere enumerating probe for chromosome 2. Okay. So that is how we do the fish tests and analyze them. So this is another type of a glioblastoma. So now many places we are doing MGMT. Okay. This is the uh, MGMT gene methylation. So this will tell us 
which tumor is going to behave somewhat better with good overall uh, progression free survival and overall survival so many a times we do gbms we test for what is called as mgmt it's a gene that encodes the uh, dna it's a dna repair protein so whenever it is hypermethylated there is a promoter region this mgmt gene is there and there is a portion of the gene which, which identifies itself as a promoter region so the promoter decides whether the mgmt gene has to be active or inactive status Okay, based on the methylation status. Okay, so when it is an inactive status, that is a good thing. So it is hypermethylated. Okay, so when it is hypermethylated, the temozolomide, which is the chemotherapy we give to treat these patients, can bring about effect because it keeps the methyl duct open and temozolomide affects the cells and kills them. When it is not hypermethylated, temozolomide is less likely to work. So they have to give radiation, and the chemo may not work. So patients who have hypermethylated state tumors, okay, it's a have a prolonged progression-free survival and overall survival, okay, and when they are receiving temozolomide. So this is one of the most prominent drug that we give in chemotherapy drug in uh, brain tumor, high-grade tumors. And clinically, it has been shown that uh, those uh, patients who have uh, MGMT hypermethylation do comparatively well. This is a study in general oncology. It was published very long ago, but I thought I will, it makes a case. The blue line, what you're seeing on top, tells us the survival difference between the two tumors that are methylated versus hypermethylated. Uh, sorry, uh, unmethylated. 